Yes, we're talking beans today. Beans and cornbread. So we've all heard it. You plant beans next to a desired crop in a process called intercropping. So you intercrop the beans next to the plant that you want, and supposedly the beans are going to give nitrogen to that plant and make it grow better. But is this really true? It is true that all plants and animals require nitrogen to survive. Nitrogen is an extraordinarily important element. It's an essential nutrient for the production of things like amino acids and proteins and nucleic acids like DNA and RNA. But the the thousand dollar question is, does planting beans next to another crop provide that other crop with the nitrogen that it needs? Well, I'm going to give you the typical scientific non-committal answer and say yes and no. But wait, but wait, don't run off yet. Let me explain why. Uh, it turns out that pretty much any plant will release nitrogen when it dies and decomposes. So the real question is, when the bean plant dies, does it release its nitrogen back into the soil, or does it go up into the atmosphere and it's lost? Now, about 78% of the air that we breathe is composed of nitrogen. But that nitrogen is not in a form that is readily available for plants to use. Now, some plants, mainly in the family Fabaceae, are able to partner with a genus of bacteria called Rhizobium. And the Rhizobium take the atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into ammonia. And ammonia is a form that the plants of nitrogen that the plants can use. And the Rhizobium store that nitrogen into little uh, nodules on the roots of the plant so that it's available to the plant. The plant, in turn, provides the Rhizobium bacteria with carbon-rich sugars that are the products of photosynthesis. So it's a mutually beneficial relationship for the two of them. Now this process is called nitrogen fixation. And beans are in the family Fabaceae and therefore can participate with the bacterium, Rhizobium, in the nitrogen fixation process. So returning to the question as to whether or not the nitrogen in a decomposing plant is released back into the atmosphere or into the soil, it turns out that most of the nitrogen is returned to the soil through the action of various microorganisms. So here is the reason for the non-committal answer to whether beans provide extra nitrogen to neighboring plants. Yes, when bean plants die, they will provide nitrogen when they decompose. But no, bean plants will not provide appreciably more nitrogen than any other dying plant. But wait! Don't click off the video yet. What about all of that nitrogen that's stored in the root nodules of beans and other members of the family Fabaceae? Where does that nitrogen go? Well, the answer is, it depends. But wait, don't, don't run away yet. Give me a chance to explain. Plants have a natural annual cycle. In temperate regions of the planet, they go through a period of dormancy during the cold months of the year, and then enter into a period of growth and reproduction during the warm months of the year. This happens year after year after year. It turns out in the tropics, the same thing happens. Uh, tropical plants also go through a period of dormancy, many times not as long as what you see in the uh, temperate region, but they do go through a period of dormancy. Now, annual plants such as beans seek to reproduce every year during the warm months. They flower and they produce the characteristic pods that we eat. But this process requires a lot of energy from the plant. 
and it typically drains all of the nitrogen resources stored in the plant's root nodules. And then after reproduction is finished, the plant typically dies. And so here's the dilemma. If you want to eat the beans that you're growing, you're not going to get the benefit of the extra nitrogen that is stored in the new nodules by the rhizobium bacteria because it's going to get used to make the beans themselves. The only way to get around that is to chop the beans before they flower and make their pods. But of course that kind of defeats the whole purpose of having beans in the first place. But there is a way to get around this and that's to use a different nitrogen fixing plant in the family Fabaceae. And I'm going to take you to one right now and explain to you how we can really take advantage of this nitrogen fixation process. Okay, so I'm standing next to one of my favorite trees here. It's called Madero Negro here in Nicaragua. Its scientific name is Glidicidius sepium. And it's a very important tree because it's a nitrogen fixer. And just like the bean plant, it, it makes pods with, with seeds inside of it when it reproduces. But unlike the bean plant, we don't eat those pods. And so we could take advantage of the nitrogen fixing ability of this particular tree. Now this tree is very unique because its leaves are just loaded with nitrogen. Even the new growth, this isn't new growth. This is a, a, a year or more of growth. So it's not green, but the new growth is all green. And even the stems of the new growth are loaded with nitrogen. And so what you can do is if you think about a tree, what we see above the ground is the trunk and then that expands into a canopy like this. Well, it turns out that the same thing happens below the ground. There's the trunk and then there's a below the ground canopy. So the tree itself, in terms of its mass, kind of looks like an hourglass. So there's there's this, and then there's the trunk, and then there's the canopy above the, above the ground. The amount of mass below the ground approximately equals the amount of mass above the ground in the tree. So what we do in permaculture a lot of times is we'll come by, and you may have heard the term chop and drop. So you come by and you, you prune, whatever you want to call it, you, you, you prune a tree, and you just drop the leaves and the, the branches where they are, they'll decompose and they, they give uh, nutrients back into the soil. Well, what happens when you chop and drop a nitrogen fixer? Let's say if I cut this branch here. Well, the mass of roots below the ground don't, don't have to feed this branch anymore with water and, and other things, so we don't need as much mass below the ground. Okay, the same thing happens here. If I was to cut this branch or this one and and what happens is that below the ground the tree the root zone in the tree actually trims itself you know we have to do it above the ground but below the ground the the roots trim themselves and so there's those root nodules that contain a lot of nitrogen if you do this if you do the chop and drop before this tree flowers and produces pods, what will happen? The root zone will get a little bit smaller to compensate for the less mass that's above here, and it will drop all that nitrogen into the soil that's in the, that's in the, root, the root nodules. Not all of it, but a, a good amount of it. So that's what you can do. Now, if you wait until after it's flowered and produced the pods, you have to wait some time after that, but you can also chop it again before it goes into dormancy. Because the, you'll give time for the, for the nodules to form, you'll give time for new shoots to form, and so there'll be plenty of root mass down below. So that's how you take a nitrogen fixer. You don't want to use one that you're going to eat, like beans because you won't be able to eat any beans. In order to get the effect of the extra nitrogen that these plants in Fabaceae can give you a boost of nitrogen, in order to get the advantage of that, 
you have to cut the beans before you can eat them. But we don't eat the fruit of this tree. So we can chop and drop this tree. We get the advantage of the nitrogen that's in the leaves when we chop and also in the, in the stems and the, and the branches. And we get the root pruning down below the ground that drops some of those nodules into the ground and releases the nitrogen. It just doesn't work so great with beans. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a little bit. And I guess I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.